Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad in which we would look at the CPA exam simulation where we have to compute taxable income. So we have a, a client and we are giving a bunch of information about this client such as income and expenses and we have to compute taxable income. Now on the CPA exam you may not receive a comprehensive simulation such as this one. You may receive a partial of it. Also in this simulation we're going to illustrate the concepts of deductions for AGI and deductions from AGI. Also in this session, we are going to talk about rental property. So this CPA simulation or this exercise touches upon several topics, which are how to compute taxable income, which is a big one, deductions for AGI, deductions from AGI, and we have to determine how to treat a rental property that's rental of vacation home so on the exam they might give you the data such as this one or they might give you exhibits for some of the data so rather than giving you for example here I'm giving you the interest on vacation home 5,000 I'm giving you the property taxes on vacation home 2,400 so rather than giving you this information I can give you form 1098 from the bank showing you how much interest you paid, showing you how much property taxes you paid for the rental property. Also, you have interest on your main home and property taxes on your main home. I could also show you a 1098, another 1098, showing you this information. So the CPA exam, what they try to do, they try to show you the information in a different format. Same thing with dividend. I'm giving you dividend. I can give you a 1099 DIV showing you 600, or I can tell you you received from from um, Ford Motor Company 600 of dividend. So don't be afraid when you see exhibits. Look at the exhibit and examine the exhibits. Nevertheless, we're gonna go ahead and solve this simulation. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. First, we have to compute how much income. So first, start with income. Well, we have income, and we have income from wages, income from wages, and income from wages, 45,000. Is that included in your taxable income? 100% that's included in taxable income. Therefore, we're going to start by listing salary of 45,000. The next source of income is rental of vacation home. Rental of vacation home is the property was rented 60 days, used personally 60 days, and it was vacant 245 days. Now we're going to dive into the rental of vacation home property. What are the rules for that? So now you have to know the rules. Well, remember, if you have a rental of vacation home, it can be, it can be three different classification. It can be personal use, in other words, not a big deal. You don't have to worry about it. It could be hybrid or it could be fully rental. Fully rental means primarily rental. So it could be primarily you personal, primarily rental and hybrid. In the prior session, I talked about, you know, we covered these topics, but let's go ahead and apply what we learned. Okay. So when is it personal use, strictly personal use? Well, it's strictly personal use when we use the property for, when we rented the property for less than 14 days. So here we, we rented the property, rented for 60 days. Therefore, it cannot be that classification. Why? Because we rented the property for 60 days. 60 days is more than 15 days. Therefore, it's not personal use. It's not personal use. We cannot treat it as so. We have two more options, hybrid and rental. So let's see if this property is a hybrid. So we know it's not primarily personal. Let's see if it's hybrid. When is it hybrid? If the personal residence is rented for, for 15 days or more, which is yes, we do meet that qualification, 15, 15 days or more, and, and 
is used for personal days more than the greater of for personal days did we use it for personal personal days greater of a 14 days or 10% of rented days well let's see we used it for uh, the, the it's rented for more than 15 days that's fine we we met that we met that because it's rented for 60 days and it was rented for the greater of 14 days or 10% of 60 10% of 60 equal to 6 days yes and it was used for personal days for more than that so it's rented more than 15 and met the second qualification the greater of either 14 days or 10% of rental days well what does what does this looks like this looks like a hybrid when is it primarily rental the same rule as this but not not used for personal days for more than 15 days or 10 percent so here it's used more because it's used more it's hybrid if it was not used more it would have been rental so all in all what do we say we say this is a hybrid property what does that mean if it's a hybrid property it means the expenses will have to be allocated between personal and business so the expenses will have to be allocated also if it's a hybrid we have to treat it as a hobby what does that mean hobby means we cannot have a net loss. The maximum we can have is 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 a zero, a break even. So the rental days is sixty. It was and rental day rental rental days rented for sixty days. The rental days is sixty. Ten percent of this is six days. So it's a greater of fourteen days or ten percent of rental days. Yes, we we used it greater than fourteen days greater than 14 days or 10% of rental days for personal because the personal was 60 therefore it's hybrid well if it's hybrid again the maximum we can deduct is what whatever we got an in income so let's complete a schedule e for this rental property first we are going to report the rental income which happens to be 4250 so we're done with the 45 now we reported the 4250 now we need to deduct the expenses the first thing we're going to deduct is the interest on vacation home and property taxes on vacation home that's what you deduct first because those could be deducted on your schedule a so you have to deduct them first in that order well let's see mortgage and taxes what we do is we add them up we add them up five thousand we add them up five thousand plus 2400 and we multiply them by 60 divided by 365 and as a result we are going to be deducting $1,216 $1,216 in mortgage and taxes how much is income remainder that we can deduct is 3033 the next we're going to do we're going to look at utilities and maintenance for the vacation home 3300 well we can deduct half of it because this is a hybrid we can deduct half of maintenance not maintain maintenance which is for maintaining the home we can deduct half of this which is 1500 after we deduct half of this we are going to have income of income of 1533 we still have depreciation on rental property of 4000 we cannot use 4000 because if we use 4000 we'll have it we'll have a net loss therefore we can only deduct 1533 and now we have a break even of zero now bear in mind any amount any amount so notice here the total amount of mortgage and interest if we add up the mortgage and the interest they add up to 7400 we used up we used of them we used of those 1216 the remainder that's not used is 6184 which will be used on schedule a and the depreciation you know whatever not depreciated will be carried on for future years as well so basically we're done with rental therefore how much do we report for rental as far as income we report for rental zero and i put zero here to remind you this is treated as a hobby because it's a hybrid property what else do we have so we're done with the rental uh, municipal bond that's not taxable also we have interest on loan used for a municipal bond that's not deductible so take this one out okay 
But what I want to what I want to mention before we proceed any further is all the deductions that we took here, the 1216, the 1500, the 1533.56, those are deductions for AGI because they we took them before we arrived to AGI. We have not arrived to AGI as of yet. Then we have dividend from Ford Motor Company. Is that taxable? Of course, the dividend is taxable. Therefore, our total taxable income is 46,600. Okay. Now, what we have left is interest on home mortgage. This is, hopefully we know this, this is Schedule A. And Schedule A is deduction from AGI. So basically, the 45,600 is our AGI, our adjusted gross income. It's, it was income minus the adjustments. Property tax on home, that's Schedule A as well. State income taxes, that's Schedule A. Charitable contribution, that's a Schedule A. Tax preparation fees, we cannot deduct. We cannot deduct. And depreciation, we already took care of that. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to take deductions from AGI. And I mentioned them. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and add them up. So the those are the four items that I mentioned that goes on Schedule A. And what else goes on Schedule A? The remaining interest and mortgage that we did not take on Schedule E, which happens to be 6,184. So the total Schedule A, which is deduction from AGI, the total Schedule A is 21,834. Now, what we what we need to what do we need to decide upon? We have to look at our Schedule A versus the standard deduction, whether we are single or married, filing jointly. And we have to determine whether Schedule A is greater than the standard deduction. If it's a greater, we'll take the standard deduction. If it's a greater, we'll take the itemized deduction, Schedule A. If it's not, we'll take the standard deduction. Now we can compute our taxable income, which is adjusted gross income minus the Schedule A. And the reason I did this is to remind you that Schedule A items are deductions from AGI, deductions from AGI, and this is our taxable income, and from this amount, we could compute our taxes. Remember, we have dividend, we have to be careful. We're not gonna go any further into this, but the point I'm trying to make, you have to know what are the deductions for AGI, what are the deductions from AGI. You have to know how to determine whether your vacation home is primarily rental use, primarily personal use, personal slash rental use, which is in our situation today. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional resources, multiple choice, true, false. Invest in yourself, whether you are a CPA exam candidate, whether you are an enrolled agent studying for that or an accounting student. Invest in yourself. Good luck. Study hard and stay safe.